Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. My name is Mayur Gohil. In this video lecture, I will be dealing with this topic of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. It's a slightly advanced topic. So let us see it step by step. So the first important thing that we would need is some prerequisites, some knowledge of some topics is required in advance. So we should be very much familiar with topic of matrices. We should know the types of matrices, square matrices, rectangular matrices. Then uh, we would need skew symmetric, symmetric matrices, unitary, orthogonal matrices, then uh, Hermitian matrices. Okay, so uh, you should brush up them uh, very quickly. Then rank of matrix is a topic which will be I will be also brushing up a little bit and if you know any other definitions of rank of matrices it would be an added advantage over here. Determinants and its properties would serve as a helping hand. If you know them very nicely then it would be very easy for you to tackle the problem because uh, some advanced problems will be using some determinant properties and it your calculations will become handy. Basic knowledge of polynomials, synthetic division of polynomials and divisions of polynomials. Uh, these are some elementary school level topics which will be used over here also. So I will be brushing up these initial topics which I feel they are quite important and so let us see what are they. Okay, so we are going for the properties of the determinants. We already know that if any two rows or the columns of a matrix are equal and if you calculate the determinant of that matrix, then that determinant is going to be zero. Okay. Other thing we know that determinant of a matrix A remains unchanged or unaltered under this two row column transformations that is Ri changing to Ri plus minus krj or ci changing to ci plus minus kcj where k is a non-zero scalar okay so these are the only two row column transformations under which the determinant is not going to change its value okay if you change the rows then the determinant sign changes and if you multiply any row or column by a constant then the determinant multiplies that many times with the constant so those are two added properties that are not of much use over here but the two main one i have mentioned okay so let us go now and revise something related to the rank of a matrix related to the row echelon form i'm giving you the definition over here please read it carefully i'll explain you this definition with the help of an example okay so let us consider this example now see what the definition says is successive rows do not consist of entirely of zeros and the second row starts with a non-zero entry to one step further to the right than the first row. So here the successive rows are, this is a 5 cross 5 matrix. So the successive rows are for 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4 and 4, 5 are the successive rows. So now what it is saying is the second row starts with a non-zero entry to one step further to the right than the first row. It means that within the pair of two successive rows, okay, so the this pair, first and the second, in this pair the second row starts one step further to the right. So it means below two there should be a zero and it should go to the right. Starting number, this number two over here, which is the pivot element of that row, it is starting from one step to the right. Okay. Same way over here, if you see, between the second and the third, second, third row, if you focus, 
it is starting one step to the right it is not exactly below 2 it is below 4 over here now if you focus over here it is instead of going one step it has gone two steps that is allowed so this is what is the meaning of this line uh, condition number one okay and all rows consisting of entirely of zeros are at the bottom that means if you see this zeros it is at the bottom now one very important remark regarding this row echelon form definition is that if you observe in this matrix the number of zeros goes on increasing so if you observe here carefully the on the first row there are no zeros it's zero then then there's one zero that is here then there are two zeros then there are four zeros then like that and then there are five zeros so this is one example that helps you to understand the number of zeros goes on increasing in a row echelon form now some important remarks given any matrix when you are asked it to convert it into row echelon form we are only supposed to use row transformations okay so we obtain the row echelon form of a given matrix only by using row transformations no other transformations are allowed the next one very important is the number of non-zero rows in row echelon form of a matrix is the rank of that matrix so here if you focus on this matrix the number of non-zero rows is four first second third and the fourth so there are four non-zero rows so the rank of this phi cross phi matrix is 4 okay so this is one brushing up of your rho echelon concept along with the rank of the matrix now uh, we will be beginning with the theory of your topic that we are going to discuss is eigenvalue and eigenvectors in the first and the foremost thing is that we will be only dealing with square matrices in this topic we are not going to talk about rectangular matrices so now consider a matrix a which is a n cross n square matrix and lambda is a scalar and x is a column vector which is a non-zero vector then I can write this thing as ax is equals to lambda x where x is non-zero this is the base of our theory okay so if I try to simplify it further and then I can shift this lambda x on the other side and pull x out what it means over here is that since x is a non-zero vector it means that the determinant of this matrix a minus lambda i is 0 so this builds up our theory now further that this equation determinant of a minus lambda i is equals to 0 is what we are going to call it as a characteristic equation okay equation 2 is called as a characteristic equation and when we solve this determinant we obtain a polynomial of degree n in lambda okay and this polynomial is known as a characteristic polynomial we generally denote it by ch suffix a bracketed lambda so indicating characteristic polynomial of a with, res uh, with respect to matrix a and the variable over here is lambda okay it's a polynomial in lambda that's the reason okay. so this is the notation for a characteristic polynomial okay now um, there is uh, there are certain when you solve this characteristic equation determinant of a minus lambda i equals to zero we get 
utmost n roots okay and these roots are lambda i's and these are known as eigen values there are three names for eigen values characteristic roots or latent roots okay so these are the roots and uh, why they are known as latent because they are hidden in the matrix we cannot see them visually but they are somehow hidden in the given matrix so that is why the latent roots and when we further solve uh, using some other uh, substitutions and all we obtain for each lambda i we obtain a vector v i which is known as a eigen vector or characteristic vector or latent vectors okay so this is the basic theory of eigen value and eigen vector now the most important thing over here is equation 1 and equation 2 over here this expression uh, this expression it helps you to recollect every time that your eigen vector has to be a non zero vector it's very important and further this determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 we do not feel it is like a polynomial but yes when we will solve it we will have a characteristic equation from this or when you solve this LHS over here it will show you it is a polynomial it doesn't look like but it, yes it is a polynomial and so that is why I am mentioning over here equation 2 is the analytical way of talking about the characteristic equation further these are some important results that will help us to solve the problems further there are many tiny tiny results like this that will be helping us throughout we will be using them without the proof so let us see these few results first we already know that trace of a is nothing but the sum of the diagonal values of matrix a now your a is nothing but a square matrix now there is a connection between the trace and the eigenvalues that is if you add up all the eigenvalues of a particular matrix a then it is nothing but the trace of that matrix and if you take the product of all the eigenvalues it is nothing but the determinant of that matrix okay now further there is this two important formulas are there so just check out them if your matrix a is a 2 cross 2 matrix then the characteristic polynomial is given by this following formula lambda square minus trace of a times lambda plus determinant a then uh, this is the third uh, for a 3 cross 3 matrix um, it says characteristic polynomial for a 3 cross 3 matrix is gonna be lambda cube minus trace of a times lambda square plus m11 plus m22 plus m33 times lambda minus the determinant of a where mij is the determinant of matrix obtained by deleting the ith row and the jth column so uh, let us see how to calculate m11 m22 m33 and these new terms that you see over here so take this example so trace of a that is what we are interested in calculating over here trace a is nothing but the total of the diagonal values so total of the diagonal value i mean the main diagonal the one plus 3 plus 6 that gives you 10 then determinant a it's very easy you are familiar it's gonna be minus 12 try to calculate it on your own now uh, let us go for m11 m11 is obtained by deleting the ith row and the jth column so that means it means the first row and the first column so if you delete the first row and the first column you obtain this small sub matrix that is gonna be the determinant of this is 18 okay so that is the determinant you have to take m22 delete the second row and the second column over here so it is 1 2 5 6 and the determinant is minus 4 
and M33. Similarly, you delete the third row and the third column, you obtain determinant as 3. So this is how you calculate. Thank you.